Hey guys, welcome back to another champion discussion. Last week we talked about manaless champions and their impact on the game and surprisingly I had a really fun time making that video since that was something I had a big opinion on. So to continue that, I want to talk about a different cast of characters, brainless champions. I say that in air quotes because brainless is obviously subjective, I can consider X champion to be low effort, low skill, whereas someone might say otherwise. Just to eliminate any confusion, let's establish what defines a brainless champion for the sake of the video. Any champion with a very easily executable one-dimensional playstyle, that is, they can only attack in one way, only approach in one way, and generally does things in only one way. Many brainless champions are also melee or short-ranged with mostly, if not all, point-and-click abilities. So I have a list right here, let me just pull it up. Okay, there we go. Amumu, Annie, Blitzcrank, Cho'Gath, Dr. Mundo, the old one anyway, although I suppose you can include the new one to some extent. Garen, Jax, Malphite, Mordekaiser, Nasus, Olaf, Ramis, Shivana, Soraka, Trundle, Trindamir, Udyr, and Vladimir. I might have missed one or two or three, whatever the case may be. You'll notice I didn't include Yumi in here, even though she's constantly memed on for being the most brainless support in the game. That's because she doesn't exactly fit the normal standard. She's weird. Not like your typical Garens or Malphites, she's more of a special kind of brainless. Anyways, this basically eliminates all marksmen because 80 carries automatically possess a mechanical skill floor far higher than that of brainless champions. But if we really wanted to include one from every class, we can maybe say Ash. She's the most macro and fundamentals oriented marksman among her peers. In every class or character selection based game, whether PvP or PvE, there's a variance in difficulty throughout the rosters. In competitive games, there are characters that are super easy to play and others that are super hard. Many of you know I like to reference Smash Bros a lot, so in that game, a brainless character will be Lucina since she's very easy to pick up with her simple but very effective attacks. Conversely, we have Sheik, who requires incredible precision and lightning fast execution to exert her pressure as, even though she has the fastest attack speed in the game, her range and damage are among the worst out of any character so it's really easy to mess up on her. League's brainless characters are very much the same way. It doesn't take much effort or practice to make the most out of their damage, if at all. If we take a look at Mordekaiser for instance, he has 4 extremely simple attacks. Q is a ginormous bonk that smacks an area in front of him, his W racks up a shield based on how much damage he takes and deals, and if he presses it again he heals for up to half of it, his E drags enemies based on where he points it, usually towards him, and his ultimate point and clicks onto a target and sends them and himself to the Shadow Realm. I'd say all things considered, he's one of the more pedestrian champions in the game, even after his rework. And then we have someone like Aphelios, who has 5 weapons and a metric ton of different combinations between his weapons that will probably take you a few dozen games to even get the hang of, let alone master. First thing I want to talk about regarding brainless champions is their current situation in League. As you know, we're in a vastly different time than back in the old days where all tanks played the same, all mages played the same, and so on. Nowadays, every new champion has a very definitive and distinctive identity. Contrary to the running gag that all champions have dashes and such, it's difficult to compare Gwen, Viego, or Set to any other member of their subclass. Additionally, over the years we've seen many old champions retrofitted to match modern design quality, very much so needed I might add, but as they were updated they became less one-dimensional, with some being made way more dynamic and skill expressive than ever before. Naturally, the number of brainless champions is in decline, and will continue to do so as more and more champions get reworked. We just got the new Dr. Mundo, Udyr is slated for next year, and in the future, Cho'Goth, Ramis, Shivana, and Trindamir are going to be updated too. I seriously doubt Riot is going to go backwards in their champion design and release old or I suppose like simple champions because that wouldn't make for the most exciting gameplay no matter how many people wish for Jax or Maokai type champions again. Fortunately, in spite of the rising average difficulty floor of the game's roster, a typical gamer can acquire a grasp on the majority of champions. It's more that the rest of the game is really hard to figure out for someone who's never played MOBAs before. So why is Riot trying to rework or remove brainless champions in the first place? I think there are two reasons. The first one, and we've already sort of covered it, they're old. I mentioned how a big problem with outdated champions is not that they're unviable or they got power crept, rather they just feel out of place when we compare them to newer champions, which are much more aesthetically pleasing, they have more voice lines, and of course more skill expression. A lot of brainless champions these days have low pick rates. Prior to Dr. Mundo's rework, he had less than a 2% average pick rate for a really, really long time. The only reason I never made a why no one plays on him is because I knew they were reworking him anyway. Trindamir, Trundle, and Cho'Goth also have rather poor pick rates since they don't have the most appealing playstyles, which brings us to reason 2. Brainless champions often tend to be stat sticks, essentially making it so the only counterplay against them, at least for melee champions, is to have more stats than them, not to outplay them. 
Since Riot's goal is to increase personal agency, players usually pick champions who can do a lot more stuff than just Now make, group up, and hit it till it dies! Brainless champions can only really do things one way. All a Garen can do is charge straight at you and use all of his abilities and hope that you die. He's solid as a rock and hits like a truck, but that's all he can do. If he doesn't have the stats to overpower you, there's literally nothing he can do to make up the difference, and by consequence he's useless. Usually, the only way to balance them is to give them higher numbers or lower cooldowns, since there's not much you can do to an ability that just does only one thing. If we were to look at Jax's W in power, what can we seriously do with this ability besides give it more damage or a lower cooldown or mana cost without changing any of its base properties? Nothing really. As a result, these champions don't make for the most healthy gameplay because the only option you have against them is to carry a bigger stick than they do. I suppose kiting them can be an option, but unless you're playing champions specifically designed to kite like Ash or Vayne, you probably won't be able to stop a Nasus running after you while he withers you. When we think of toxic champions, everyone's first thoughts go straight to the 200 years characters like Viego, Yona, and Akali, who all have really dynamic gameplay. But I'd wager just as many players would dislike brainless champions for the opposite reason, because they're so easy to play for the extent at which they can impact the game. I know it sounds like I'm contradicting myself when I say they have a lot of impact for being so easy to play, considering just a few minutes ago I said they can't do a lot when behind, but when they're fed, realistically there's very little you can do to stop them because they're too tanky, do too much damage, and in some cases are too fast. I'm sure we can all remember the helplessness of trying to stop a fed Trindamir, Udyr, or Olaf. There's legit no counterplay except being stronger than them. How can you stop these champions other than Now make, group up, and hit it till it dies! Okay, last time I'm doing that, I promise. In a way, brainless champions are problematic for the same reasons as overloaded champions. Overloaded champions have so many options and ways to carry games, but that also means they have so many ways to screw up since they could choose the wrong time to engage, the wrong place, or the wrong targets. Brainless champions can only do things one way, which makes them feel pathetic if that one thing doesn't work. Conversely, all they have to do is do that one thing and they will achieve success. So if there's such a big problem, should we remove or rework all of them? Absolutely not. While I agree that a lot of these champions need some major revamping, it's far from a good idea to go after all of them. A common issue among new players nowadays is how beginner-unfriendly League of Legends is. The tutorial teaches you virtually nothing about the actual game, and the community sort of exacerbates this issue by being extremely unwelcoming and dismissive towards beginners. Brainless Champions allow said new players an easy way into understanding the intricacies of the game. It's impossible to learn even basic macro and game knowledge when your first champion is a Felios or a Kali. By playing someone with simple abilities, it flattens the learning curve for many players. I'm sure at one point we've all played Garen, Ash, Dr. Mundo, Soraka, Amumu, Annie, you know, those 450 Blue Essence champions, because they were meant to be easily accessible to give new players a streamlined experience of the game. Of course, now half of them aren't even that easy to play anymore, like Poppy, Kale, and Warwick, but you get what I mean. Their initial purpose was meant to be the gateway champions. For a genre as complex as MOBAs, brainless champions are absolutely critical. They not only make the game more digestible for novices, but they also act as a catalyst for learning other champions. One very noteworthy example would be Garen and Darius. I know, I know, many people consider Darius to be brainless. He does hella damage and can practically 1v19 fights by mashing his abilities. Comparatively speaking though, he is more nuanced than Garen. You can't question that. Darius does have a slightly higher skill ceiling than his Demacian rival, but thanks to Garen, people can transition smoothly over to Darius by employing the same fundamentals they built while playing Garen. This applies to other brainless champions. Learning Annie can make it easier to learn other mages like Syndra, Twisted Fate, and Ari. Learning Jax can make it easier to pick up other skirmishers like Yasuo, Fiora, and Viego. Soraka is a fantastic starter champion to learn the ins and outs of enchanters before you segue into Janna, Lulu, and Nami. Amumu can get you started on learning the jungle since he has respectable clear speed, great ganks with his Q, and his ultimate is wonderful for team fights. Having said that, I think we should talk about what makes some brainless champions good and some bad. One thing each of the champions I mentioned just now have in common are that they have a very definitive role. Garen is a beefy fighter who embodies the typical warrior berserker archetype you see in almost every MMO. He can take a lot of hits and then dish them out in equal force. Very straightforward playstyle, but one that represents the Juggernaut subclass really well through each of his abilities. Passive for endurance, Q for the move speed and burst damage, W for the shield, damage reduction and tenacity, E for the sustained damage, and ultimate for the finisher. Annie portrays burst mages very well. 
Each first mage has something in their kit that makes it easy for them to deal their combos. Ari has her charm, Syndra has her stun, Vagar has his cage, Lux has her root, and so on. Annie's passive allows her Q, W, or ultimate to be the first ability to start that chain, and the rest is her just pretty much mashing her abilities on someone and praying that they're gonna explode. It does sound kind of lame, but it gets the job done, and opponents who know how to deal with their subclass can do so accordingly. Amumu does the same for vanguards. He's got the Q for engage, the W for slow but consistent damage, E for damage reduction, and ultimate for the follow-up after you use Q. Soraka has her Q for some chip damage, just like every other enchanter, her W to support her allies, her E to deter enemy threats, and her ultimate for stronger support. Out of all the hook-type champions, Blitzcrank is the easiest to play. W to make him go faster to get in range of his hook, Q to pull them in, E to knock them up after they get pulled, and then ultimate to disrupt them even further. Each ability has a defined purpose that contributes towards a plain yet effective bread and butter combo. These champions will likely not get reworked because despite their brainless design, they do everything that is expected from this subclass, they have a playstyle that makes sense, and their abilities all work in tandem with one another to produce a result. On the other hand, let's take a look at Cho'Gath. I might be pissing off Tyler1 by saying this, but Cho'Gath struggles from a lot of issues. He doesn't really have a clear identity. Is he a mage? Is he a tank? His crowd control, sustain, and HP growth suggest he would be a tank, but his high damage, AP ratios, and his ultimate would suggest he's a burst mage. One might argue that's what makes him interesting because you can choose between two different things. That would be a valid counterpoint, except tanks and burst mages don't work in harmony with each other. A vanguard or a diver, that could work because both of them have the same idea of charging headfirst into a team fight. An artillery mage can double as a catcher, or an enchanter can double as a warden. If you want a champion to be a hybrid, the two subclasses have to be compatible. Cho'Gath's abilities are all super easy to understand and use. However, not only did they have confusing purposes, but none of them synergize well with each other. If you want a more in-depth explanation, I suggest you watch my Why No One Plays episode on him. Malphite faces sort of the same issue. He's a vanguard who's all about going in, yet much of his early game consists of spamming Q over and over again for long-range harass like he's a poke champion. The only vanguardy thing about him is his insane durability and ultimate. Everything else feels shoehorned in. In my reworks video, I talked about how his whole theme of being a living, walking mountain is not reflected in his basic abilities whatsoever outside of his armor scaling, and they all lack cohesion, they're just random abilities placed together on a champion. Last example will probably be Udyr. He's classified as a juggernaut, and juggernauts are known to be slow and clunky but have incredible durability and damage output, especially in the AoE department. You think of Mordekaiser, Darius, Aatrox, Set. These guys are nasty in teamfights because they're these super imposing fortresses that need to be dismantled ASAP. But Udyr feels more like a hit and run type skirmisher who just happens to build tank items. He doesn't carry the same kind of like Thanos 1v99 raid boss vibe that his peers do. At least he doesn't look the part. And like Malphite and Cho'Gath, he has just random abilities that each do random things. Anyway, to wrap up the video, I think designing brainless champions in League is much like walking on eggshells. There's a very fine line between creating someone who just happens to be very simple and easy to play, and someone who has a really degenerate playstyle. Ironically, the more complex a champion is, the easier it is to balance them. Do you guys remember when they gave a small buff to Vladimir's Q by lowering its cooldown by 1 second at rank 5, and that instantly made him like a top tier pick? That's because Vladimir has so few metrics in his kit that if you change one of them, it greatly impacts his play. Whereas someone like Kaisa, if you lower her E cooldown by 1 second, doesn't make that much of a difference because there's so many other factors that affect her performance, not just stats. I think it's important to have brainless champions in the game so long as they have definitive playstyles and are flushed out really well despite their simplicity. Although I suppose the consequences of having brainless design is that you swing to both extremes constantly. You either hard 1v9 or hard feed because there's really no in between, just like hyper complex champions. What do you think about brainless champions? Do you want them all gone and reworked or do you agree with me that they're necessary for the game? I am anxious to see how many people are gonna leave comments talking about how overpowered Garen is because I'm not sure why, but for some reason a lot of my subscribers just happen to hate Garen, for whatever reason. <laughs> With that said, if you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe, consider following me on my socials and join my Discord server if you'd like. Also, if you have some extra time, why not take a look at my other discussion videos, I have quite a few of them. But thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care.